This morning we're going to begin a, and am I working? There we go. We're going to begin a new series of lessons, Ancient Truths for a Modern World. Now sometimes I will have a series of lessons and they truly kind of are intertwined, build on one another. Uh, these not as much. We may take certain sections that are somewhat related, but each lesson is standalone. But I really believe this with all my heart. It's from God's Word, an ancient truth. But it's a truth that this modern world needs to hear and needs to know. And today we're going to look at a very specific, very specifically, and I am not working too good this morning, that God is real. God is real. You know, if you were going to say, what is the most ancient truth? Well, I think you'd go back to Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Yes, God is real. Now, I'd like to say that everyone believes in God, but, well, not quite. In fact, here we find that roughly the number of atheists have doubled in the last few years, that it's at 3.1%, but the number of agnostics at about 4%. So we're talking about over 7% of our country does not have faith in God. But additionally, if you said, okay, faith in God, faith in the God of the Bible, faith in the God that you believe in and that you follow, Frankly, the numbers would fall greatly. But atheist agnostic, about 7%. The next slide. Interestingly, if you were to look at the demographics, uh, if we're going to say, what's the picture of the atheist? It tends to be male, tends to be white, tends to be educated. The next slide. And very sadly... They tend to be young. Of all the atheists, this basically 3.1%, if we're going to say, what are their ages? 40% are ages 18 through 29, while only 9% would be 65 plus. And so we can see that truly the number of atheists well, they tend to be younger, which is frightening because then what does that bode for the future? Frankly, more and more atheists in our country. The next slide. An interesting thing, too, was as you would consider atheism in Canada, and click it again, that this data was found. Click it again. That if you were to read that, I'm not going to take the time to do so right now, but it basically saying that of the people who are a member of a religious group, and even those who attend weekly religious services, that a portion of those are atheist. And you know, we might say, I don't get it. Well, I'd like to say that I've never known of someone who's in a worship assembly that was an atheist. I wish everyone was a believer. But I know that one time I was at a youth gathering back when I was about 21 years of age and taking some teenage high schoolers to it. It was down in Pensacola, Florida. And towards the end of the few days, people could kind of share some things with others and one person got up. And they said, you know, I, I've enjoyed being here. And I've learned some things, and I've made friends, but I don't want to be a hypocrite about this because, you see, I'm not a believer. Yet there they were at a youth rally. We'd gone on a campaign to Scotland, Livingston, Scotland. The next year, we'd gone back to the same place. Yeah, I noticed someone that wasn't there. Ask about him. You won't believe this, I was told. At the end of one service, he just got up, he announced to the congregation, he says, you've been my good friends, and I care about you, 
But I'm not going to be a hypocrite about it anymore. I don't believe, and I'm not coming back. Sad, how sad, how sad. And so it would be, yeah, sometimes the atheists are among us. I would hope they would be and come to the point of belief. You know, if you were to say, what's the most growing religious group in the world? It's the nuns. You know what the nuns are? They have no religious belief. Even if they are believers in God, they are associated with no religious group. It's the second religious, largest religious group in North America and most of Europe, the nuns. And clearly in France, they are majority. In the Netherlands, New Zealand, United Kingdom, all of these are increasingly becoming secular societies, losing their Christian majority. And if you say, what's the root of it all? Frankly, I believe the root of it all is unbelief, atheism and agnosticism. And so we're asking the question this morning, does God exist? I believe this is an ancient truth for a modern world that needs to be preached. And we need to have our faith strengthened and know, yes, my God is real. God exists. If you were to go back over 100 years, you could read of William Paley's watch argument. Here's what he said. He said, let's say you're walking around and you find a watch on the ground. As you examine it, you marvel at the intricately complex interweaving in its parts, means to an end. Surely you would not think that this marvel would have come about by itself. The watch must have a maker. Just as the watch has such complex means to an end, so does nature to a much greater extent. Just look at the complexity of the human eye. Thus, we must conclude that nature has a maker too. Well, I think you would agree with William Paley that as you would examine a watch, you would recognize that with its complexity and with its design, there had to be a designer and there had to be a maker. And for someone to suggest that there was no designer and no maker, you would scoff. You would scoff. You know, if we were going to bring this forward, we might say, wow, look at this iPhone. And to a person who's never seen it, they'd be in awe at what it can do as you begin to show them, wow, it can take amazing pictures, better than many cameras. And so people are abandoning cameras just taking their pictures on iPhone. And look at this. It can actually take a video. This little thing can take a pretty good video. And then I want you to see this. I can hit this button, and it can be uploaded to, to, to a place where anybody in the world can see it. Or I can put it on a different place and, and my friends, just my friends, can see it, this, this video. But here's another thing amazing. I can actually, no matter where I am, almost anywhere in the world, I can dial a number and that other person that I'm trying to reach can answer it. Oh, oh by the way, that really was the first function, but it's gotten so complex and so broad that now that's just a part of what it does. And if somebody says, wow, where'd that come from? Now, can you imagine if you were just to say, well, it, it, just, it just happened. It just kind of naturally and on its own evolved and came to be. You know, once again, you'd kind of probably find that someone's a scoffer. <laughs> no, I don't believe you. This didn't just happen. This didn't, didn't come to be. There's great design. There's complexity. There had to be a designer, and there had to be a maker. So we would understand that with a watch, and so we would understand that with this iPhone, and so must we not understand that with this world that God's given us. Up in North Georgia, there's a place called Fort Mountain, and there you'll find this wall that is about 855 feet across and about two to six feet high and originally thought to be higher. Yet, it kind of confuses folks because it's just this way. They don't know who put it there. 
They don't know who built it. Some have thought, well, it's Indians, but yet some have suggested, no, this is not the way the Indians constructed things, so probably not Indians. Some have suggested that it was a, a, a settler who had come to near Mobile, went up the river, and etc. as early as 1170. And then some have thought, well, maybe it's the Soto that, of course, many, many years later. But nobody knows who built that wall, but no one disputes the fact that somebody built it and somebody put it there. You know, we understand this concept, don't we? Not too far from there is Amicalola Falls. If you were to travel up to Dahlonega and then turn east, you're going to go just almost right by Amicalola Falls. An interesting thing, too, there at that park is the uh, southernmost beginning of the Appalachian Trail. But an interesting thing there, besides just the beauty of the falls themselves, is the fact that there's a couple of vehicles to be seen. If you were to go up this West Ridge Falls access trail, you'll see this, this old truck, and it's almost now embedded between these trees. And so someone, someone wrote about this. There's an old truck relatively intact, wedged between some trees. I cannot fathom how this vehicle ended up where it is. It is one of the two vehicles I saw at Emma Colola State Park that I could not figure out how they reached their final resting point. You know, it's like, where did this come from? How did it get there? But you don't doubt but what? There was a designer, there was a maker, and there was even somebody who put it there. We don't deny that. We don't misunderstand that. The second one to be seen is, is the bumper, still shiny, but kind of the underside chassis of an automobile that's kind of below one of the uh, decks that's along the stairs that you would climb getting to the falls. Once again, if you think, how in the world did it get here? I mean, it doesn't make sense that it is right here. It makes no sense. I can't imagine how somebody even put it here. But you still walk away understanding there was a designer, there was a maker, and somehow somebody put it there. You see, we understand that with the watch. We understand it with the iPhone. We understand it with this wall that we cannot explain. We understand it with these automobiles at an odd place where we wouldn't think that it would be. But then what about our universe and nature itself? Friends, there is design, and we're going to see there is design in nature. The period of one revolution around the sun is referred to as a year, or 365 days. A little bit more than that, 5 hours, 48 minutes, 46 seconds. That's why every fourth year we have that leap year, where we get that extra day. But it's not by accident that we have such a revolution around the sun. For frankly, as the earth is 93 million miles from the sun, it is that perfect distance and maintains that perfect distance in its revolution around the sun. For friends, if it were 10% closer, we would burn up. And if it were 10% farther away, we would freeze. It's kind of this way. You think sometimes summers in Alabama can be tough. Or you think maybe sometimes winters, as the temperature plunges, can be tough. Oh, not like if we were, once again, 10% closer to the sun or 10% farther away. I think, once again, just like maybe that watch or like the iPhone, here is evidence, evidence of design, Evidence of a designer, evidence of a maker. The distance of the earth from the moon is about 240,000 miles. That may not seem so significant to us, but as you realize that this distance from the moon helps determine the tides of the ocean, well, if the moon was further away, one thing I suggested is that there would be no movement of the seas and they would become stagnant, becoming stagnant. Well, you've seen stagnant ponds. 
and the pond scum, and how eventually what's even within the pond dies. But then on the other hand, if the moon was closer, that it could mean, you know, the tides would become so great that so much of our earth might even be flooded. But once again, as you would consider this, you'd have to recognize here is design, which means there's got to be a designer. There's got to be a maker. Once again, considering one more just fact, and these could be multiplied. There's 21% of oxygen in the air that we breathe. And if it was less, we would not have enough oxygen for our bodies. But if we had 100% oxygen, friends, we would live in a flammable world. You've all seen those signs where somebody is actually using oxygen, no, ox, no smoking, uh, oxygen in use, no smoking, or open flames. But why this 21%? Once again, there's evidence of the design, showing a designer showing that there's a maker. In fact, if we continue to breathe 100% oxygen, actually, as say this, bad things happen and won't go into it. So that 21% you see so right. Now we might just ask this question. Well, are we just lucky? Are we just, you know, just lucky that the earth is the perfect distance from the sun? Are we just lucky that the moon is the perfect distance from the earth? Are we just lucky that there's the right amount of oxygen in the atmosphere? You know, to all of these things, I would say, no, we're not talking here about luck, but we're talking about design and a designer, and that that designer is God. I guess if you'd say, what are some things that have begun to impress you? Well, Steve Housley might say, robots and the use of robots. A number of years ago, I actually saw a, a video, a little YouTube, about this robot developed by Toyota that was playing the violin. Now, I'd have to say this. I've heard better violin players. But just the very fact that he was doing it, I'm be honest, I was very impressed that somebody had the smarts, the means to design a robot to play a violin. Now, somebody said, well, what was the purpose and why did they design this robot to play a violin? I guess just to show that they could do it. Are you not impressed with robotics? But yet... Oh, by the way, isn't it interesting that they made that robot kind of look like a man? Not all robotics. Sometimes we speak of industrial robotics. Those robotics look like machines. But this robot kind of looks like a man, doesn't he? Doing what a man would do, play a violin. Well, some men would do. But it's nothing like a man. The human body, well engineered, with a skeletal system of 206 bones, has a rugged, sophisticated digestive system. There's a marvelous muscular connective tissue system. There's sensitive, analytical, taste, smell system. There's programmed glandular hormone system. There's lungs that filter and warm the oxygen in, in places in the blood, taking away the carbon dioxide. There's the skin that both insulates and ventilates and protects. There's a waste disposal system. There's a system to take oxygen and nutrient, nutrition to every cell. If we were impressed with a robot... How much more so should we be impressed with the human body? And, and if we recognize, and we would readily recognize with a robot, 
there is design, there's a designer, there's a maker, then how much more so would it be that as we look at the human body, we recognize here's evidence of design. That means there had to be a designer and there had to be a maker. Yeah, we know that the robot was built with design, that it had a designer, and the human body has greater design and has a designer. And that designer and maker is God. In December 1976, there was the Warren flu debate. And uh, Brother Warren was a brother in Christ. Anthony Flew was a world, you might say, foremost atheist. And so they debated the existence of God. Now one of the things that Thomas Warren did was he, he showed a picture of a prosthetic arm. And he asked Anthony Flew, and he answered truthfully, does, does this show evidence of design? And he said, yes. But then he would show him a real arm. Where'd this come from? And his answer was, it just grew there. It just grew there. Now, to me and to you, I think we'd readily say, yes, this prosthetic arm, amazing. And there was evidence of design, there was a designer, there was a maker. But the human arm, so much greater, so much better. Frankly, who's willing to give up your real arm voluntarily for a prosthetic arm? No, 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 no. I want to keep the arm God gave me. But an interesting thing about this is that before... And Anthony Flew died. He wrote a book, There Is a God. And, and he did come around to the point of belief. Now, if we say exactly what did he believe in, did he believe in the God of the Bible, that's kind of a different story there. But he came around to the point of belief. And, and it almost makes you wonder, did every day as he went to the mirror and, and he shaved and in the mirror he saw that, he saw that arm rise up. He saw the hand and its functions. And maybe, maybe remembered, you know, that debate. Brother Warren asked him about the prosthetic arm. Does it show evidence of design? Yes. What about the human arm? Well, it just grew there. That every day he's presented with the evidence of design, evidence that there's a designer, and evidence that there is a maker. Someone, God, he designed and built this universe in which we live. Someone, God, he designed and built this amazing body that houses you. And someone, God, designed and built the human arm, obviously showing great, again, design. There is a designer and that there is a maker. Ancient truths for a modern world, yes, very basic at the very outset that God is real. You know, I kind of imagine that most of you do believe that God is real, or you probably wouldn't be here this morning. But your faith will be assaulted, I promise you. Atheism and agnosticism is growing in this country. Even, as we mentioned, the greatest or the largest, one of the largest religious groups now is the nuns, N-O-N-E-S, people who have no religious belief. 
or connected with no religious group. Yeah, the more there is, the more people think, well, maybe that's to be considered. Maybe that's, I hope that you would remember, yes, God's real. There's no way to explain the design without God. No way to explain what we see and know in nature without a designer being God. There's no way that this could exist without the maker and that there's no adequate cause but God. God is real. This morning, we've not talked so much about the gospel of Jesus Christ, but I beg of you to realize that God is real and so all that comes with that. God's word, Jesus is God's son, heaven, hell. We, being his creatures, our sin. The condition that we have as a result of our sin to be lost. And that we can be thankful that because of God's mercy and God's grace, we can have that forgiveness. And we would beg of you, if you have that faith, that you would turn from your sin, which is repentance. And we can give you opportunity to confess that faith and then to be immersed for the forgiveness of sins. And if we could assist you in that or if there's a need for prayer, we pray that you'd come as we stand and sing.